Our first guest today describes the Philippines as the weakest link in the region when it comes to standing up to China. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has made his first state visit to Beijing, agreeing with Chinese leader Xi Jinping to manage their differences on territorial disputes while discussing big business deals. The trip comes after American Vice President Kamala Harris visited the Philippines in November. The pair discussed new projects funded by the U.S., including more defense sites. Moving ties with China to a higher gear. This was the Philippine president's explicit wish before he embarked on a three-day trip to Beijing. His Chinese counterpart reciprocated, saying the friendship between the two nations has always been a precious one. 48 years ago, your father, together with the older generation of Chinese leaders, made the historic decision to establish diplomatic ties between China and the Philippines. You personally participated in and witnessed some of the most important interactions. During the dictatorship of the president's father in the 70s, the then 18-year-old Marcos Jr. already played a role in forging friendship, engaging with Communist Party leader Mao Zedong. But the Philippines has also kept ties with the U.S. For Washington, annual joint military drills like this have been key to keep its strategic interest in the Pacific. That decades-old alliance fell into stagnation when former President Rodrigo Duterte took office in 2016. During his six years in power, Duterte sought closer relations with Beijing in exchange for investments. The new president says he'll pursue a different, quote, friend-to-all, enemy-to-none strategy, seeking to restore ties with the U.S. while keeping the friendship with China. It has now become my responsibility, but certainly my privilege, to be able to continue on that legacy, to continue to promote the friendship between China and the Philippines. Marcos Jr.'s visit comes amid unresolved territorial disputes in the South China Sea. Now the neighbours have agreed to set up direct communication channels to handle tensions. This while signing over a dozen deals that range from infrastructure developments to the import of durians from the Philippines. A fruitful trip for the president. Philippine journalist Anna Santos joins us here in our Berlin studios. So Marcos Jr. in Beijing and before that, I, I find this quite interesting, the US vice president in the Philippines, but not Joe Biden. No, 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 it was VP Kamala Harris. But let's look at what those two visits mean, Ben. I think it's more of, you know, the Philippines balancing this tightrope of a relationship that it has with both China and the U.S. Now, what did the Kamala Harris visit state? You know, she visited Palawan, which is a major waterway flashpoint in the Philippines, and made some strong statements about defending territories and protecting territories against neighbors, right? So they saw this, a lot of political analysts saw this as a message not just to the Philippines, but also to China. And then now you see the Philippines going over to China for this state visit. It's more like it wants to be friends with with both countries, yeah. definitely. But the Philippines needs to answer the question of how can you be friends with a country like China that is actively encroaching on your territory and contesting claims to territory that is yours? Well, geographically, this is difficult because the U.S. is so far away. Um, and they didn't send Biden, as I mentioned. Uh, at the same time, the Philippines has China in its backyard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's why it's also like it has been over the past years engaged in so many territorial disputes with China along with its neighbors. But unlike... In, in the South China Sea, which you refer to as? The West Philippine Sea. I will not call it the South <laughs> China Sea. But uh, the West Philippine Sea, the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines, which all countries are entitled to within a certain radius outside of your borders, has been encroached in by China. Mm. All right? but And we see... Where do I, we see our neighbors? Our neighbors like Indonesia have issued very strong statements about we will not give up even an inch of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Vietnam has like had on, had had, you know, encounters with China in their part also of the South China Sea that has overlapping claims. And here you see the Philippines quite passive yeah, about yeah. asserting its claims but, and but its territorial rights. But how should they stand rights. up to, to China? 
I think that number one, we, we wasted an opportunity with really that, that Hague win that awarded or that recognized the Philippine claim on the West Philippine Sea as ancestral domain. Okay, that was such a loss in terms of not upholding that. And that could also be a rallying cry for all the other countries in the region that have overlapping claims to the South China Sea, which the China claims with its nine dash line. So I thought that that was like, that was a wasted opportunity. If I may also tell you, Ben, the fishermen that I spoke to in the country when, you know, that have these fight offs with the Chinese ships, they said that win made us feel like we could be someone. You know, we're a small player in this region, and this country recognizing our claims was an issue that we could stand up to someone like China. So while the Philippines is doing deals with China, um, a, a lot of them big financial deals here, mm. where does that put the Philippines' historically strong relationship with the U.S.? I think there's still a very strong historical relationship with the U.S. that's that's like ironclad with all sorts of deals that range from maritime security, military partnerships, and economic. Let's not forget the, the U.S. is a huge economic the and biggest. assistant assistance partner. Yes, to the Philippines, right? So I think that part is is ironclad. Let's also not forget the relationship the Marcos family has with the U.S. Back in 1986, when they were kicked out of the country and ousted, it was the U.S. that sheltered them in exile for all those years before they were allowed to come back to the Philippines. Some strong historical ties as well as economic ties there. Ana Santos, thank you very much for coming in and giving us your insights. Thank you, Ben.